Hi, my name is John. Welcome to part 11 in a series of short videos all about the metalwork in a lathe. In this episode, I'm going to cover face plates, uh, how to use a face plate, which is actually going back a little bit towards work holding, but I've now got a job that is ideal for the face plate, so I'm going to demonstrate how I use and how I set up the face plate. Anyway, that's enough talking, let's bring the camera in. I've got a link plate here. Um, it's been plasma cut out of 12mm metal steel plate and what I've got to do is bore that hole there to 31mm and that hole there to 21mm. I could put it in a 4 jaw chuck, grip in there and grip in there, except if I did that it means that jaw there will be sticking out too far and it will hit the bed of the lathe so I can't grip it in a 4 jaw chuck. So a face plate is ideal for doing this particular operation. I've got the face plate mounted on the spindle of the lathe and I'm going to bore that to 31mm so I need to make sure that the hole I've got in there is plenty wide enough. I know it's a 40mm bore through there. If I had to bore a 100mm hole it would mean packing out the workpiece and put a packer behind it like that so I could bore through without damaging the face plate. This is going to be held in the centre there, held on by two, probably three clamps. As an easy way to line this up, um, simply put a centre on there from the tailstock and that's going to hold that basically in the centre. It's going to have a, a pin welded in so it hasn't got to be that accurate, it's a 30 mil pin that goes into there but we'll get it as good as we can. Right so I've got a little tailstock centre in there, these holes are plasma cut, cut from that side, that's the best side. That side's not bad, there's a little rag on it, so you use the best side and we simply put it into there like that and that will hold that nicely in the centre, that can't be anything else. I'll bring the camera around and show you how much clearance I've got between the end of that and the lathe bed before we start. Right, so now we need to clamp this in position. These holes are for clamp bolts and clamp pieces to go through. Basically I'll probably put a one on there and possibly a bar across there. Basically it's the same as clamping something to a milling machine table. I've just got a stud throw there with a nut on both ends. That's one. I'm going to put another one on here. These are the bolts I use on the milling machine. If I had a few of these to do, I would put a nut on to hold that in and it would save them jiggling around and dropping off. Where the third hand comes in, useful sometimes to, to hold things. Right, so now we've got a really good grip on that. Dispense with the tailstock. You can see down there how much clearance I've got between the lathe bed and the end of that. So I couldn't have gripped that in a four jaw chuck. I'm going to put another one on here just to be belt and braces but two would definitely hold it but putting the one on here will help to balance things out and we'll talk about balance once we get this clamped up right so that's really got a, a good hold of that now when you're performing operations like this you've got to be aware of what you're doing all these bits here spinning around that you don't want to get tangled up in that lot as far as speed goes, it's actually not too badly balanced there, but you don't want to go like revving it really fast. You could put extra weight on here, but that's not it's not too bad, it's not balanced too bad at all. 
There you can see the nuts on the back of the face plate. It's a better shot there, showing you the clearance I've got between the lathe bed, not a lot. This here's got a gap bed, but I wouldn't be wanting to take that out. Right now the whole 31 mil. I'm going to put a drill through first because you often find stuff that's been plasma cut gets a hard skin on it and it doesn't do your boring tools any good. So we'll put a nice stiff most tape of drill through there. Right, we need a 31 mil hole and I've got a 29 mil drill. A nice tight one, a really short one. A little bit faster than that I think. So you keep your hands well away from it. You stand behind it, stand on one side of it, you don't stand right in front of it, especially if it was good. Just to go through. Right, so that's out to 29, we want 31. Before you put any power on, you turn the lathe by hand to make sure you can get the boring bar all the way through without anything hitting because there's lots of clearance issues down here. We've got clearance, just but that's clearance is clearance. Right, so that's running at 155 and it's got no vibration problems at all. I'll just touch this off. I want two mil out, so I'll put a one mil cut on first and we'll measure it. It's half a mil dialed in, which will take one mil out. That's at 30.5. We want 31. Then on 31, like I say, it's going to have a pin welded in, so it's not as super pretty good. The other way to do this would be to mount it on another machine and use a boring bar. But honestly, I think this is quite a lot easier. If you had a few to do, you can make a jig. You go on your face to get the clamp on. Right, we've got 31.2, that's certainly near enough all it's got to be, like I say, it's got the pin welded in. Now it's a case of turning it round and doing you know, one exactly the same. With a face plate you aren't committed to having stuff flat on. You can mount an angle plate on like that, clamp an angle plate on and clamp things onto there. That could be clamped on and drilled, it's, you can put a U-clamp on, hold that there. There's actually a thing called a Keat plate, which is designed to hold things like that on a surface plate, or sorry, on a face plate. Some of the old technical books uh, show loads of stuff, massive stuff on face plates, big parts of trains with massive gears on and big balance weights, all interesting stuff. So you dig the face plate out from the bottom of the lathe and have a play with it. I think you'll find it. Interesting to use and very useful. I like the challenge of mounting different things in machining things that really are too big for the machines I've got. 
we were saying that my machines are probably a little bit bigger than most hobby, hobby machines. I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed making it and I hope you picked something up from it. Don't forget, no jewellery, no dangly sleeves. Be aware of what you've got spinning around and don't stand in the line of fire. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.